Hi, and welcome to the beautiful Liberty Park Nature Center. My name is Janine. I am a naturalist with Summit Metro Parks, and I'm here today to lead you through building your very own bluebird house. So if you picked up a kit, those were courtesy of the ODNR, the Ohio Department of Natural Resources. So thank you very much to them. Or you can follow along with a kit of your own design. If you decide to go that way, I would suggest checking out the North American Bluebird Society's website. They have everything you could ever want to know about bluebirds, including some designs for kits you can make at home. So we're gonna learn how to make this kit then we're going to learn how to monitor it, how to identify the different types of birds that may use this house, including bluebirds, wrens, and chickadees. And then we'll give you a few tips and tricks about how to set these up in your yard for best success. So with that, let's get started. All right, so if you picked up a kit from us, it looks something like this, all opened up. There should be six pieces inside, everything you need to build your bluebird house as well as some nails. These are galvanized, so they should not rust and they'll do very well outdoors. The only thing that you need to supply yourself is a hammer. All of the holes that we will be using are already pre-drilled, which makes it so easy. Next up, some safety for us and some safety for the birds. For us, you wanna make sure that you're working somewhere comfortable for you with a table that is covered so you don't damage the table and work with a partner or if you're a kid make sure you work with an adult we don't want any smashed fingers now safety for the birds the biggest thing when you put this box together make sure that you leave just a tiny bit of space between the roof and the side that's going to allow for some venting so on a hot summer day those birds um, can get a little bit of airflow and breathe well and finally when we put our box together You'll notice on one side, we're only gonna put two nails in and that allows us to have an opening and closing side so we can peek in on the birds. With that, let's get building. Alrighty, here we go. We are going to build our bluebird house. So first things first, we're gonna start with the back. That is the longest piece that you have. You'll notice on one side, there are one, two, three holes drilled in a row. That's gonna be the bottom of our house. And we're gonna start with a side. There should be two sides that are equal in size. We're gonna lay that on a table, line it up with the two pre-drilled holes on the side of your house. I'm gonna start a couple of nails here. Line that up just like so. All right, here we go. All right, make sure that second side is lined up. Awesome. All right, so now we have the back of our house and the side. We're gonna flip it upside down like so. And next up, we're going to grab the front of our house. Line that up and remember, what did we need to leave for the birds? Some venting on the side. So rather than lining up the side and the front just right, make sure that you pop the front up just a little bit. Okay, we're gonna line this up here and add two nails on the side. Awesome. All right, it's looking like a house. Up next, we have the bottom. You'll notice the four corners are cut out. So if any rain gets inside, um, that can drain out and it allows for a little bit more venting. So we're gonna take our house, take our bottom, slide that inside. All right, two more nails. Flip it over, make sure you nail it on the back. Oh, 
also helpful to have a partner to hold your box in place. All right, we're up to our second side. And remember, when we put this in place, we only want to put two nails at the top and not nail the bottom so that we can get inside of our house. So line this up. One nail in the front and one nail in the back. So we'll start with the front. Flip it over and nail the back. Let's check, make sure it opens. All right, and as your box ages outside, this, um, this wall may not sit so straight anymore. It may want to kick out. So what you can do is use that little hole in the front. You may need to pre-drill it a little bit bigger and put a nail there to hold it close. And a house wouldn't be a home without a roof. So our last piece is our roof. We are going to there are two holes on this roof. They are going to nail into the front of the house. So line that up. All right. Perfect. One more. And one more nail from the back. Now, we want to make sure that we still have that venting. We might need to pop our roof up just a bit. And we can put one more nail to hold that roof in place. We have a bluebird house. Well done. All right, congratulations. Now that we have built our beautiful bluebird boxes, we have made a way to peek into the world of the birds living inside. So I'm going to teach you the few different types of birds that might live in these houses. First off, you may find a chickadee, a wren, a bluebird, but how do you tell the difference? You'll need to notice what the nest is made out of and what color the eggs are to know who's living there. You might find a chickadee. A chickadee will build its nest full of moss. It's really soft with little white eggs. A tree swallow, beautiful blue and white bird, and their nest is covered in feathers. It looks very luxurious with very small white to light blue eggs. And this is what our bluebird looks like. Inside, you see a small cup, and any eggs that you would find would be a pale blue with no speckles. They like to build primarily with grasses. And another bird that could nest in this house is a wren. This might look like a bag of pretzels, because they build with sticks and their eggs are small and brown with speckles. Now, any of those birds, if you get one to nest inside of that house, that is a success because it means that you have provided a home for a beneficial native bird and their chicks. The only bird that we don't want to nest in these homes is this one here. This is a European house sparrow. House sparrows are considered invasive. They were brought over from Europe. And unfortunately, they're very, very aggressive toward our native birds, and they can even kill bluebirds. You can recognize their nest because they will fill the box to the brim, and they'll use just about anything. You might find anything from sticks and grasses, even some plastic, feathers, all kinds of things, and their eggs are white with little brown speckles. Now the ODNR encourages you, if you see these birds nesting, 
to continuously remove their nest up to and including the eggs so that you discourage these birds and allow this house to be occupied by a beneficial native bird. So with that, we're gonna do just one more thing. We're gonna step outside and we're going to talk just a few ways of how to mount that house that you have created and how to encourage bluebirds and other native birds to your own backyard. All right, so now that you have created your bluebird house, the last thing we need to do is put it outside. This box here is set in an open field that bumps up to some woods. That is prime habitat for bluebirds. Your backyard may be a different habitat, and that's okay. Chickadees and wrens prefer more of a wooded habitat. Bluebirds prefer open. You'll get someone living inside of this home. You'll notice that I mounted mine on a metal pole along with some brackets that I found at a hardware store in the plumbing section. That's gonna keep any predators from coming up into that box. But there's a lot of other ways that you can do this. Again, I suggest going to the North American Bluebird Society's website. They have all kinds of details. One other thing, you'll notice this box is about a year old, so it's changing in color. If you want to make your Bluebird house last even longer, you can coat it just on the outside with a non-toxic paint. Lastly, one of the most common questions we get is how you can invite more birds to visit your own backyard. Birds like us have the same basic needs, shelter, water, and food. You can provide water such as bird baths. You can provide food by feeding the birds with traditional bird feeders or by planting native plants. These young birds, when they're growing, eat almost 100% caterpillars, so build up the local ecosystem from the ground up. Thank you again so much for watching. If you have any further questions, you can always reach out to us at Summit Metro Parks. You can click the links below to find out about native plants in your area, as well as more information about bluebirds and how to provide habitat for them. Thank you so much, and we will see you next time.